Well, here at Forgotten Machines, for the last two months, we have been working hard and working very diligently to try to learn why this final drive couldn't be emulated. This is the Convergent Technologies AWS in its currently disassembled state here in the lab. And with these machines, we've received exactly three hard drives that once belonged to these systems. This is one of them, and it's the only one that wasn't playing nice. Now, it was working perfectly. It booted no problem and continues to boot no problem. We've even read it with David Gesswein's MFM Reader emulator. No problem. No errors. But when we try to emulate it, it would never boot. Why not? Well, I think we're finally going to find out why. What's the drive? Well, it's a computer memories. That's right, a computer memories model CM5410C. Fairly enigmatic model of it in and of itself. Very magical device, so it seems. We're going to find out just exactly how magical, ethereal, and mysterious it really is. Or, perhaps it's just your average MFM hard drive with the ST506 interface. Perhaps. Perhaps there's nothing special about it, but we're going to find out. And the beautiful OEM manual for this device, or at least the CM5000 series, is available at bitsavers.org forward slash pdf forward slash cmi. What's it called? The CM5000 OEM manual, April 1982. And look at that. Isn't it beautiful in all of its 1980s color glory, especially that light blue on white? Yeah. Interestingly, this OEM manual, even though it's for the 5000 series, doesn't seem to list specifically the 5410. We jump right uh, from the 5206 to the 5412 and then on to the 5619. But I'm just going to hope that this one is close enough because when it comes to the 5000 resources here on BitSavers, we have the CM5000 schematic and the CM5000 OEM manual, so the OEM manual is just a little bit easier to stomach. But, we're not going to dive too deeply into that, I just wanted to let you know it's there. So, let's see if we can finally learn the secret, the mystery, about what keeps any of these emulators, whether it's David Gesswein's MFM emulator from pdp8online.com forward slash MFM, or the DREM. We're going to find out today why neither one of them would emulate this drive for the Convergent Technologies AWS. When we were to plug in the physical hard drive and try to boot it, it would work flawlessly. But when we take the image of the hard drive with this emulator reader and try to emulate it, play it back, if you will, with either of the devices here on the Convergent Technologies AWS, this is what we get. E49. But what is E49? What is it? According to the 1982 Convergent Technologies AWS 220, 230, and 240 hardware manual, Volume 1, E49 falls in this range, found here on PDF page 65. But these codes are the same, respectively, to a different range. So E49 actually equals E29. E29, found here on PDF page 61. And what's E29? Error 29. Run file, checksum, error. Why are we seeing this? 
Well, it started to become pretty obvious to me that the file that was being loaded at this time wasn't loading properly or maybe even loading in the right order of bytes or sectors so that when the file was completely loaded, the checksum didn't add up right, saying that something with the file was wrong. But why isn't the file being loaded properly on these emulated drives when it was on the physical drive? Well, for that, we turn to some logic analyzers and some logic analysis, if you will. What did we analyze? Well, we wanted to find out just exactly what the hard drive was communicating with the computer. And so for that, we started testing the lines on the ST506 ST412 user interface. Now, not the hard drive that the interface is named after, as this Wikipedia article shows, but I like to use this Wikipedia article because it, I think it has a very good and easy to understand diagram of the pinout of these 20 and 34 pin connectors that are that, that go to these hard drives. So we hooked up the logic analyzer to just about everything that made sense. First and foremost, of course, to the MFM read signals. I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but just want to give you an overview of what we came up with. We noticed something really interesting. We checked all of the signals that made sense. I've named them fairly clearly over here on the left. This is a logic analyzer capture of the physical drive booting properly. Starting at machine power up. And this is a logic analyzer capture of the emulator failing to boot. Again, starting with power up. So we looked deep at all kinds of the things that we thought were causing the problem. I even wrote some programs to decode the data pulses from MFM. Here on the channel that I ordered first, which was the 20 pin plug, pin 18, the read data pulse. And I patterned this after some programs that I wrote for the universal QIC tape reader device that I made some years ago. I want to point out here that my friend Jim Drew was instrumental in helping me think through this process and analyze some of the things that we're talking about here. So, thanks Jim. I couldn't have gotten this far without your help. One of the things that we noticed immediately, or I shouldn't say immediately, but very soon in, was this. Now what we're looking at here is the read data pulse, the data that's being read by the hard drive. And we're looking at the head select lines, head select line 0, 1, and 2. Now, the CM5410 has four heads, which means only head select 0 and head select 1 are necessary in order to choose between heads numbers 0 through 3. Well, but then I noticed that we're getting signals here on the head select 2, which is only used if heads are requested, accessed if you will, numbered four, five, six, or greater. So why was I getting signals on this? Indicating that the hard drive controller in the Convergent Technologies AWS is thinking that maybe this is a six-headed drive instead of a four-headed drive or something like that. Certainly more than four. Looking back over here, this is where we really noticed this. This is the physical drive booting. Notice how the head select two goes high once data starts to be read and then stays high throughout the entire process. By the way, this section right here is the entirety of the operating system booting. Here, it's the entirety of the operating system attempting to boot and failing with E49 on the emulator. See how we have these signals here on head select two, asking for heads greater than a quantity of four or a head numbered four or higher because you start counting at zero, I guess. Anyway, let's not get confused about that. So it started to become then pretty clear that for whatever reason, the Convergent Technologies AWS hard disk controller was recognizing the CM5410 as a four-headed hard drive and no more. But when we plugged in the emulator, it didn't recognize it as a four-headed hard drive, but it recognized it as something with more than four heads like six. That was a clear sign of a problem. So I started down the road trying to figure out what on earth the hard disk controller was doing in the Convergent Technologies AWS in order to 
figure out, learn, in order to know what hard drive was plugged into it. How did it know? This was a mystery that took weeks to figure out, and the help of some friends like Jim Drew and Tom Trubisky, and even CPRO. And it turns out that the answer really is buried in here. What are these? Well, these are hard disk controller boards for the Convergent Technologies AWS. The heart of it is this mysterious thing right here. It's a Synetics N8X300 processor. Now you don't hear that every day. Then we will look at some other chips on this board. Several others just leaped off the board, so to speak, right at me. And it was, the, it was these. These EEPROMs right here. At least I thought they were EEPROMs. Well, first clue is they're socketed and they are about the size of EEPROMs that I've seen, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they are. But here, I could identify that one. That one's an AM2732. But then what are these? Well, these are far more mysterious. Studying these closer, they have these labels on them. I mean, it says AWS HDC as if it's a programmable chip. We have the A2 and the A1. That's a clue. Some of these others have numbers on them. 72-73 and 72-74. Still others have these dot matrix printed labels on it. 72-00089 and 72-00089 and 72-00090. Okay. And then there's these. Presumably these are all the same because they're supposedly this is supposed to be all compatible boards. Well, this one is clearly a Motorola and it doesn't have a tag on it, but what's really interesting is the number on the chip here uh, matches the number on these labels right here, which must mean something, but when we try to do any internet search on a Motorola chip like this, we get absolutely nothing. Well, speculation is that maybe these were pre-programmed at Motorola and specially ordered from Convergent Technologies to come pre-programmed. That's speculation. We don't know that, but we still don't know what they are. Well, thankfully, I was able to pry up one of these labels and go to good read on what, on what these are. So let's have a look at that. And now we can see it. These are Synetics N82S191s. That's right, Synetics N82S191. And what is that? Aha, we finally find it. 16K bit TTL bipolar proms. They're military bipolar memory products. Oh boy. So, of course, now what are we going to do with these things? But read them. Which I attempted to do with my already customized Mini Pro TL866A. Which, mind you, is absolutely not designed. To read these chips but I'm persistent that doesn't stop me we just had to come up with an adapter that's all but that is going to be the subject of another video maybe so I read these AM 2732s in my EEPROM reader no problem I simply use the AMD AM 2732 setting in the Mini Pro no problem. But these are not the ones we disassembled, and I should point out that these are identical across all of the hard disk controller boards. And then I read the 16-bit TTL bipolar proms with the custom adapter. More on that in another video. But the 82S191s have no equivalent here in the Mini Pro software. No such thing. No surprise. 
There's nothing in the MiniPro documentation that says that any version supports 16K bit TTL bipolar proms like this. But I read them anyway using my adapter. Shout out to info at eprompro.com for helping with that. More on that later. But I read them as a 2716 EEPROM. And why not stick with the AMD, although I suppose any of them will do. So I read not one, but all of the EEPROMs and put them here on Google Drive. I'd be happy to provide a link for you to access them if you'd like in the video description. And I read all of them. All of the hard disk controller boards that we have, and we listed them either by machine serial number, or if we got a board without a machine, as is the case, I listed the uh, the board serial numbers. So these last, the, these shorter ones that start with Y and R, these are board serial numbers. And the ones that start with A, those are machine serial numbers. So I didn't specify uh, the board serial number because I keep track of it together with the machine to make sure that long term I don't get them separated. So the, uh, the ones that Tom ended up uh, disassembling are these, the Y2084s. So let's have a look at those, shall we? Oh, yes. So here we are. I read them with the Mini Pro. And this is the uh, 720089, and this is the 720090. And that should correspond with Tom's disassembly of these, which we can see is fantastic work at github.com forward slash Trubisky forward slash AWS forward slash blob forward slash master AWS dot DIS. That's right. So I think we'll find that right there. Look at some of his other projects. Thank you very much, Tom, for your dedication and help here. This has been uh, very fantastic for you to help with. And something that is way beyond my skill set at this time, so I'm very grateful. One of the important things to note, I think, is uh, how Tom disassembled them. He disassembled them using a tool called S8X30X, but there's no hyperlink specified here as to where, where that is. So you, you just have to in, uh, instinctively know, I guess, that it's actually somebody else's tool that's also on GitHub, S8X30X, and it's created by a user by the name of Brouhaha, which I think is very, very fitting because, well, this whole thing has turned into a Brouhaha for us. So... Thank you very much, Brouhaha, for creating the S8X30X disassembler and making that available on GitHub. But what I was really interesting is where the hard disk controller sets the number of heads. Aha! This is this is the magic place right here. On lines 535 to 544, the comments of the CMD config read six bytes of config into the into the controller, number of tracks heads per track and sectors per track so the real important thing here is the fact that the heads per track is wrong with the emulator and it's right with the physical hard drive so how do we know and this is what particularly jumped out at me when i found this section right here i said wait 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 a minute this is what we want type 2 256 tracks four heads and 32 sectors per track whereas when we plug the emulator in it seems to be giving it seems to be trying to control six heads so how how does this code get the information from the drive that it's a four head 32 sectors per track this is what it does with the information here and how it interprets that information in the in the code in the in the in the prom but how does it know <laughs> i emailed tom and i asked him and here was his reply. I decided to trace signals, working my way back from the MFM drive through the motherboard wireless to be sure I knew what was talking to what on the hard disk controller schematic, and hence in the code. This will lead to more notes in the code, but right now it is three tables on sheets of paper on my desk. One interesting thing turned up. They seem to abuse the DS3 and DS4 on pins 30 and 32 of the MFM drive cable. They read these two signals and give their own name DR type 0 and 1. 
This is suggestive, but let's see where it leads. So this is the moment that the light bulb went on over my head and I said, aha! The drive is telling the hard disk controller what architecture it has. And maybe, just maybe, it's through the drive select three and or four lines. But you may want to inspect any drives that have actually worked in your AWS systems. With two bits, we could have four different supported drive types. Well, of course, that's what I did. As soon as I possibly could. So, of course, I'm going to start right here with the Computer Memories, Inc. CM5410C because this is the drive that's so mysterious. Can't emulate it. Works physically, but you can't emulate it. Well, let's test these connectors. All right, so here's our 20 pin and our 34 pin. So what are we testing? We're testing pins uh, 30 and 32 to see if they have anything going on that shouldn't be the case. So let's put this right here on the ground. Check our meter. Yep, that beeps when we have connectivity. So what do we have here? So that's pin 2, and that's pin 34. So what are we interested in? Pins 30 and 32. Well, let's check some of these others just for fun. Yep, that's grounded. No, 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 no. Once I got to pin 30, which is right here, nothing. 32. Aha! Pin 32 is grounded out. Well, that's a drive select line. That's one of these. Well, now for the real test. Let's go to the emulator. Is that grounded out on the emulator? What's going on with that? Well, here's the emulator. And two starts out here on the back side. So let's take a look at those. Let's do exactly the same test. So we have a ground pin on the emulator that's easier to get to, so let me clip to that. Okay, make sure our meter is set here. Yep, it beeps. So there's pin 2, there's pin 34, so here's pin 30, nothing, here's, here's pin 32, nothing. Could this be it? Could this be the reason? The fact that pin 32 is not grounded, and it is on the physical drive, could that be how the hard disk controller really knows? Could it be? Okay, this is it, the moment of truth. We're going to see if we can boot from emulator here. This whole mess was just diagnostic with logic analyzers. What have we done? We've connected basically a drive select 4 pin, which corresponds to pin 32 of 34 on this 34 pin connector. We connected it to ground. Why? Well, because we think the original drives are doing exactly that. You see this rework wire right here? Yeah. You can thank Tom Trubisky for coming up with this one. He disassembled the proms. And he found that that is what the AWS controller, the our hard disk controller for this machine, uses to set architecture. So we're going to see right now if that's going to be it. So, let's get this camera set here. Let's power it on and see. The hard drive is going to come on, but it's the emulator that's running. Just because I haven't unplugged the hard drive from power. Oh, moment of truth. Okay, final try. The emulator jumpered. We're going to see if it boots to the CM5410 emulated for the first time ever. Now that we got pin 32 on the 34 pin jumpered ground. Oh boy.
Here we go. Here it goes. All right, hitting the hard drive. Come on, come on, come on. Yes! Yeah, 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 that's a good sign. That's a good sign. That's what it looks like when it boots. Let's see if it keeps going. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, this is fantastic. After all this time, wow. Wow. We got it. Tom Trubisky, all of the work you did, all of the work you did to disassemble that prom on the hard disk controller board just paid off. What am I talking about? Good question. Where are they? Where are these things here? As I ruffle and shuffle through here. Here's one. I just got these things all... No, no. There's... <laughs> These. Where are they? Where are they? There they are. All the work you did, Tom, to disassemble what's on these proms right here, particularly these two, I think, that was the key. Jumper, pin 34 is what does it right there on the emulator you want to see it on the board oh yeah now this is the CM5616 but it also has a jumper you see that right there it goes to the test point look at that the test point connect oh wait there we go it's focused it's connected to ground it's connected to ground and it goes over here to the terminator but it's not it's not where the it's not where this is no no it goes to another one where oh you wouldn't believe it. One of these two. Right here. It's the wire wrap. They did a wire wrap for this thing. Can you believe it? You're never we're never gonna find it in the schematics because that wire wrap's not gonna be in the schematics. Yeah, this is a dirty little trick Convergent did, and you found it, Tom. I am just stoked. I am so stoked. Right there, the code in here that you disassembled, because unless I'm mistaken, this little secret trick of terminating pin 30 to pin 30 and 32 to ground uh for drive select three and four and, and terminating those for drive architecture drive type instead that's not in the documentation is it i mean you only had to figure it out with the disassembly as i've never seen that in the documentation anywhere did you <laughs> or maybe part of it let's chat Anyway, success! Yes! Thanks, Tom. Can't wait for you to see this. Let's see that rework nice and close up. Right here, test point one, it's grounded. We see the rework wire. Comes right up here, right over to here. Now this, this is a termination uh, jumper, but it doesn't go to that. No, no! No, no, we're going to take that off and see where it goes. Okay. So have a look. Where does it go? Over to this one. Right here. Not this one, which is the jumper, presumably for, you know, uh, drive one of, drive one as opposed to drive zero. You know, I, we're, we're just guessing. That's drive zero, that's drive one, that's drive two, that's drive three, or if you start, <laughs> and we don't know what these two are, we're just guessing. All right, we gotta check the schematic. If you start with zero, that's drive zero, that's drive one, that's drive two, that's drive three depending on whether you start with zero or one. 
okay? But look, it goes right over to the, the drive for termination, but it doesn't get terminated, to, you know, to, uh, by jumper, wherever these other, wherever these pins go. These, this goes to pin 32, right there. See that right there? That's the that's that's connector thirty two of the thirty four pin of the thirty four pin connector here on the MFM SD five hundred six hard drive. That's thirty four connector connector number thirty four. That's connector number thirty two right there. So I just had to beep it out with the meter. But that's where that went. So look at that sneaky sneaky rework that Convergent Technologies did on that. Sneaky sneaky sneaky. All right, let's put this back. There. Back the way it was. So now the real question, now the real question, where's the code? How did Tom figure it out? Where in where in the disassembly code did he figure it out?